Ciao Vieira, I'm Martina and today we're gonna try to create the same diorama spending one hour, 10 hours and 100 hours on each one. And then at the end we're gonna compare all the three and see how big a difference there is. I'm very curious to see if I'm even gonna be able to make anything in an hour. And I think this is gonna be such a fun experiment just to see how much time actually matters when making stuff. So, to make it fair, I made the three similar bases. They're all made of XPS foam, painted around the edge. They're all the same size, material, everything. And this is what we're gonna build our houses on top of. And you know, I know it sounds kind of boring that we're just gonna make houses, but it's gonna be a lot cooler than it sounds. I promise. I think we're ready to start the one hour challenge. So I put a clock in the background here so we can see that I actually spent one hour. And I'm really curious to see how much work I'm actually able to do because I'm gonna include everything like drying time and paint and everything within that one hour. I have a sneaking suspicion it's not gonna be finished, but we'll just have to see. So let's start the hour in three, two, one, let's go. I'm sweating, it's only six minutes left. I've been working as fast as I can, but I still have to paint it. But I'm just putting on flock in the hope that this might dry. I haven't even painted the house. Just a little grass left. I didn't think I would be distressed. I'm taking it very seriously, okay? Move on to the paint. We only have, oh we have five minutes. Uh, brush, brush, brush. Large brush for bigger surface area. This is not going the way I planned. Oh my god, it looks so bad. Okay, one hour's up. That was surprisingly stressful. <laughs> like, I can feel my heartbeat just go brrrr. But it was also super fun to see, like, where my limitation is within an hour. And, you know, it's not too bad. I didn't have time to paint at all. So it's just a sad black blob with some orangey brown blobs on it. But the textures aren't too bad. And also, there's grass. So, you know, it's nice and lush. <laughs> I have a bit higher hopes for the 10 hour one. I think we're gonna do, well, better than this, hopefully. So let me just quickly clean this mess up so we can do the 10 hour one. Good morning! I thought we could begin everything with casting some rocks in plaster. Let's start the clock now. Making plaster rocks is actually really simple. The way to make it is basically just aluminum foil, fold it double, crinkle, turn it into a little bowl like this, and then you just cast the plaster in there and you have some nice stone texture on the plaster. And remember not to pick this up and shake it or like drop it down to get rid of the air bubbles because it flattens the bottom. Don't ask me how I know this. I'm gonna quickly just cast the rest. We're currently at a little less than 12 minutes. So, so far so good. So now I'm gonna start working on the wooden beams that is going to construct our house and all the walls and everything that comes with it. Let's get back to work. been one hour and 17 minutes. I don't actually know if that's a good time or not, but <laughs> this is what I have so far. I've made a bunch of these textured beams. These are all gonna be wooden beams on the building. And then I have a bunch of these tiny, tiny little bricks that we're gonna make the chimney out of. My plan next is really to start working on the house. So like cutting out the walls, cutting out the windows, and then use all of these beams and bricks to build the actual house.
quick little update. We are now at 4 hours 11 minutes. It's looking pretty good so far. I'm gonna go get those plaster rocks that we casted because they are now dry. So we can crush them up, add them to the landscape, and then that can dry while we finish the house. Rocks, check. Sculpt the mold, check. So this has to dry now for a few hours. So I'm just gonna throw this gently over there and we can go back to focusing on the house. I just finished up the house and we're now at 7 hours 38 minutes which means we only have a little more than two hours left, which is a bit less than what I hoped to be able to spend on the paint job and everything, but we just gotta work with what we have. The house is looking really good so far, at least. I think the shingles turned out really cute and the chimney is very wonky and uneven, but you know, adds to the whimsical charm. Now we can finally start painting this house and I'm gonna use the same thing I did on the first one, which is just some matte Mod Podge mixed with some black paint, because then you get like, a two-in-one solution. You get a base coat that is black and also it kind of binds everything together because it's a glue. I know my ba brain just go So yeah I'm basically just gonna cover the whole house and the whole ground in this mix. at 9 hours 22 minutes and this is where I would normally start applying some washes to make the colors look more interesting and give them some more depth but I think I really overestimated how much time I would actually have to paint so I'm gonna skip the washes and jump straight to the dry brushing just to give these some highlights and make things stand out and once we've done that I really hope we have time to add some grass and foliage. Before we move on, it's time for an ad for Skillshare. If you haven't heard about them before, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of creative classes in everything from animation and illustration to film and music and freelance and business. There's something for everyone. What's pretty cool is when you join a class, you get the opportunity to join in on discussions related to the class and also share what you worked on while following the class with other students so you can get feedback. Recently, I've really enjoyed the course Digital Brushwork Techniques by Marco Bucci, which shows you in detail how to improve and work on your brushwork in digital painting, which is something I really struggle with. Skillshare has classes on so many different topics, which can help you on your own creative journey, whether that's improving an existing skill or learning a new one. So if you think this sounds interesting, the first 1000 who signs up with our link or code down in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring their classes and your creativity today. And back to the project. <sighs> 10 hours is now up and it is finished. And I have to say, it looks slightly better than the first one. <laughs> but I don't want to compare them just yet. I want to wait until we have the 100 hour ones. So we can like put them all together and then compare them. All in all, pretty happy with the results. But now I'm really, really looking forward to starting on the 100 hour one because Oh my god, my fingers are itching to add more details and add lights and make it just so much more complicated. <laughs> I found this online timer, which I should have thought about from the beginning, but uh, I didn't. For the 100 hour one, 
I want to go much more complicated. So I made this sketch of the house. So what I'm thinking is multiple stories with a lot more architectural detail, as well as detail around the house, hopefully some printed miniatures, and of course more detail in the foliage and lights. So let's start the clock now. So start, I'll make it fun now. <laughs> with the bottom floor I'm just gonna add some bricks around the opening here around the door and the windows and instead of making completely new ones I am gonna reuse the bricks I made for the 10 hour one because I have so many left over and I don't want to waste them and to make that as fair as possible I'm gonna subtract the time I've spent making the bricks from the total hour time and I'm probably gonna do that with more items later things that I have prepared beforehand or things I have left over I'm gonna subtract the time I spent making those from the total hour time. I just think that's fair. So far, so good. We have now spent almost the same amount of time as the whole previous diorama. <laughs> Somehow, but there's a lot more detail in here. I've just attached the first floor to the diorama base and blended it in with some sculpt mold and that now has to dry. So I'm just gonna set this to the side and continue working on all the floors that are going on top of this one. a long time just gluing foam and texturing foam <laughs> but the house is now finished almost and we have spent about 72 hours no we have spent 28 hours but we have 72 left and while i've been working on the house hansi has been working on printing a lot of resin miniatures and also painting them so i'm gonna subtract the time he spent on that from the clock and one of those miniatures is this little well that i'm planning to put like right there. So I'm gonna glue this in place and then use some sculpt mold to kind of blend it in with the landscape and then paint it and make a little roof for it. I made the roof for the well, blended it in with the landscape 
So while the skeletal mold dries, I'm gonna pick all of this apart and cover everything in the Mod Pod Mod Mod Pod Mod 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 Pod Mod Pod Mod Pod Mod Pod And again with the white shirt. Why? I swear it's every time. <laughs> I just finished up the signs and they turned out super cute, but I realized I should probably paint them before I fasten them. It's just gonna be easier. But that means the black base paint is done and we can finally, finally move on to the painting. Let's paint. You might have noticed that the top floor has some huge circular windows with nothing in them. And we thought we could try to make some stained glass windows. So we've 3D printed these in some clear resin, which is magic in itself. And we made a little pattern that is erased so we can paint that black and then paint colors inside it. Hopefully we're left with a stained glass window. And by the way, we stole this tip from Tabletop Time. So check out their channel. They're pretty awesome. Oh, and we also made these adorable little lanterns using the same method. Just clear resin, painted the raised parts black, and then put a little LED inside it. They turned out super cute! <laughs> is finally finished and just look at it and wait wait it has lights <laughs> i am super happy with how it turned out it has so much detail more than we usually put in and, and it shows although there is eight hours more on the clock i think we could subtract a little more time from the time hans has spent painting miniatures so we're almost at 100 hours but i just i'm kind of exhausted working on this house because it's been a lot of work so i'm really curious to see like how big the difference is from this huge thing compared to the two others so finally comparison time 10 hour huh <laughs> One hour. it's so much worse now than when i made it like it's just a blob, it's so sad, <laughs> but also not too bad for being an hour, so I'm not mad about it. <laughs> the result on this is obviously a big winner. Just look at the paint job, look at all the detail. Oh. It's just nice to see that spending the time we do on our project actually pays off when you look at this compared to this. <laughs> But I think the best value for time is definitely the 10 hour one, just because it looks really good and I didn't spend that much time on it. So, you know, overall winner, but best value. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed this as well and maybe it helps you 
manage your time expectations for your own projects. And if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below, because I see you. Thank you for watching, and of course, a huge thanks to our patrons for continuing to support us. And now, it's time. Let's have a look at the final result!